Hey guys, John here with Terminal Goblin Games, and today we're going to map floor, dungeon floor 1 of the Castle Black Falcon Mega Dungeon. I've recorded this over the course of like 2 or 3 days, just uh, getting to it as I could. So uh, maybe some disjointing and stuff, because I usually do this kind of stuff in like one shot and then edit out all my stupid rambling. So let's see how it goes, and let's dive right on in. Alright, now we're going to do the bottom floor, uh, that's or the first floor, that's below the second floor that we mapped last time, and we're going to uh, show the lead down into the actual dungeon here. So we have the uh, right under the second floor there. This, this is going to be like the uh, lead into the barracks and then down to the dungeon. This can be like an office here, uh, 20 by 20, 20 feet squared, uh, small office I guess, I don't know, I'm really bad at, at visualizing space. This can be the office, this can be the lounge, not lounge, this can be the actual place where the guards sleep. have a big double door here, then this will lead out to the dungeon, we'll have a little space in between. We're going to have some stairs down. We could have the guards, uh, whoever, like the head guard, he could be sleeping upstairs, but this can be his office. Alright, so down here is where we're going to have the dungeon. Uh, like the, <laughs> the regular bad people go here dungeon. And we'll signify entering the actual dungeon. We'll have, uh, we'll have this be broken here. We'll have the cage, uh, the, or the, the lock door. The cell door, that's what I'm looking for. We'll have the cell door still be locked, that way they have to, uh, explore around and find the key. Have it lead down into this room, and then we'll have some more, some more. Uh, actually, we'll have a uh, we'll have a tunnel, like a slanted tunnel, going down. Putting arrows that way, I remember they go down. <laughs> and this is going to take us into floor one of the dungeon. All right, so we got floor one here. So let's see where this is going to go uh, from here. Oh, we can have it a uh, door here. I'm going for more of a, like a mythic underworld kind of vibe to this, so nothing's going to have to make uh, too much sense. This open right up, open up in this uh, cool shaped room, and we'll have have it south. Uh, we'll have it open up. We'll have it just kind of go into small smaller room here. This will be our first secret. I just realized I wrote all this on key. All right, there we go. <laughs> Door there. It's a lead. Go to the hallway. Have it a curve. Or not curve, we'll have it fork off here in three ways. Give them, give them some choices here. Go to a right out of torch door, and I'm gonna use a trick that I saw in like a, in Bandit's Keep video on the first Dungeons and Dragons dungeon. And we want to have this lead to a carousel. And so what this is gonna do is this carousel is just gonna keep the party leaving back. Actually, like it looped around. So this is gonna be this is gonna be a carousel here. Is <laughs> going to. Uh, and have a secret door in it if you want to get anywhere. And if you do find it, you'll get to go, uh, you'll get to skip something. We'll find out what. We'll have this, uh, this lead to, let's go to more of like a, an open, really open room here. Give the players a bit. So we can have, this can, I want to have orcs on this layer, or sorry, on this floor. We have this be the orc layer, and this could be to skip them. This secret here. Oh, well, actually, no, this could... Could this skip the orcs? Good. No, this can be a secret to the floor below. Maybe it will, uh, this all lead to the orcs, and we will have, uh, some rubble blocking off. That's, that's not really too, too far. Let's have this not be the orc lair, and let's have the orc lair, like, over here. And this can be, we can have this, we can, we'll have this go this way. So right now, I'm not really thinking too, I'm, uh, I'm just drawing shapes, getting, getting a map down. I'm not like, you know, I don't have some master plan or anything like that, except uh, make a cool mega dungeon. Do this, we can uh, go ahead and ban this to a cave. We can have, we can have this kind of be like a maze. So we know this path. The one which will take them there, they won't know that. We're going to have this work out. You know, I'll have, the, I'll have the one that they wouldn't expect to go down. Give them all sorts of choices here to uh, just to mess with them and to also... Uh, have all these choices uh, to waste time, and time means dungeon turns, and that's uh, it's a resource drain. This, this one's just going to go to the wall. This one's going to open a little cavern here. We put some like cave beetles or something in here. This up. I fit it's impassable. Uh, I'm going to fill up just to be uh, to help myself and you know other map readers out. Have this lead to something. You have this lead to like three doors. Like I said, we're doing we're doing Funhouse uh, Mythical Underworld Dungeon. We did three doors, and, and each of these doors is going to lead to something. Uh, one will be treasure, 
One will be a monster, and the other is going to be a puzzle, we'll say. And we'll have some sort of magic here that will only have them open one. But we're going to have to give, give them kind of a hint to which one is the good stuff. So we'll have some inscription on the wall here. I'll go ahead and key this. This is just a reminder for when I key this later. So I went and I keyed everything uh, off camera here. And I realized that four is pretty empty. Let's go ahead and then edit this. So I had the image of four being like a kitchen. So let's uh, section this off. So this can be the kitchen. This can be a pantry. I'm trying to think of like an alternative way they could get in aside from the fountain outside. Then I thought of something really, uh, really stupid. <laughs> Maybe there can be like a dumb waiter, like here, that would take them. That could take them to here. Like that's how they feed the prisoners. They just like, or like a slide. Maybe oh, a one-way slide. That would be dope because then they would have to like struggle to get up. Yeah, I like that. That's really stupid, but uh, I love it. And I already eat a lot of stuff, so uh, I'm gonna be we're gonna be dumb here and just say K okay, one one two. And this can be, I can have this be like the, the sleeping quarters of the, of the cooks. Next to the pantry here, we can have like another office, maybe for, you know, the chef. And this can be for the chef officers, uh, the, the, shoe she the sous chefs maybe. <laughs> you know, thinking about it, we could have, uh, we still need to do the entrance from the well. What we could probably do in this little cave portion, we could have this uh, cave portion here, and up here we could have some like uh, some giant giant hornets or giant wasps or something like that. That way they can fly in and out, and uh, we'll have a little challenge for the players since they have poison, and poison will mess your day up here. We'll go back and key that off screen, uh, and I'll come cut back. All right, so we got all the keys back here. I don't remember. Uh, I recorded this in two separate days. I don't remember if I said that the the stairs here would go to Getting the drop on the orc layer if they went to level three to let them avoid the orc layer. I'll have to watch that back. Uh, but anyways, maybe we could give them uh, another door here. I guess it's gonna be an orc layer. I keep calling it an orc layer, but uh, I gotta be honest, I've not actually decided yet. But either way, that's gonna give them a nice out. So we'll cut off line of sight, uh, curved hallways. So that's something you should uh, you can keep in mind if you don't want them seeing too far here. Key road here. Mega dungeons. Uh, we're looking for density. Like there's gotta be a lot of shit. And we'll also worry about factions and uh, setting up the dungeon story as we guess we key this. Underground dome or something. That would be cool. Funky shapes over the hallway. Yeah, there we go. That would be some, uh, just to change it up. We've got a lot of squares in here. Uh, and I've heard players don't really care about that kind of thing. At least my players don't. Um, but I like to have at least some sort of like cool thing in here. This is actually where we will hallway here. This is where we're going to put these stairs down. This is going to be all open, so whatever is in here is going to probably know that they're coming uh, if they are not quiet. Windiness here, the just players unnerved. Also provoke wandering monster checks. That's about all we'll do uh, for floor one for now, because all of my players, there's no way they're going to get through all of this. You know, you know what might be really cool is if they get this. This goes uh, to this dome here. Instead of to uh, the orcs living in 18. Ooh, actually, no, there's, there's some more cool stuff. Have it, uh, have it narrowed down. So the orcs, uh, they're going to have this place fairly fortified. So we will uh, we'll do this. Have this actually narrow. Orcs have a tidy hole. Instead of this stuff, we'll just have this uh, calm itself down, terminate. Then this here can be like just a bunch of like murder holes as they stick, uh, stick, stick spears and shit through it. I have to rekey again because yeah there we go so that'll that'll be a fun little thing uh that the players might run into uh but now because that's the only way uh well no, i guess they could bypass it if they find this secret room up here so it's not too bad it's not like i'm setting them up for failure or anything uh i mean unless they don't find it <laughs> yeah all right now that we got this and we have uh you know sufficiently good ideas here now let's switch over to keying it all right so we're over here to uh key the dungeon and let's go ahead and start off with the stuff we've already decided. I'll go ahead and fill that stuff in. The one here, we had the guard captain office. We knew four is going to be the kitchen. And now we have these, uh, these sub kitchens that we're going to, uh, or not sub kitchen. So yeah, the sub kitchen rooms that we're going, that we're going to, uh, to deal with here. Is that how you spell dumb waiter? Like, <laughs> I'm going to assume. Apologies to any waiters out there. K2 is going to be a pantry. Uh... 
Worker bedroom. Yeah, worker bedroom. And five is going to be the two chef barracks. Uh, two here. That is going to be the guard barracks. And three is going to be the uh, guard. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Guard uh, break room. We'll, we'll call. We'll call it that. Okay. So five is going to be dungeon entrance. I'm going to call this the prison in parentheses. Actually, let's just uh, let's just call it prison, just so we're not uh, messing things up here. Uh, six is prison, and last cell to south is entrance to dungeon. Okay, so uh, seven. What what do we want in seven here? So I was trying to think. Um, when I was running the game uh, for the outside. They ended up getting into the bedroom, and they found uh, they found his great sword. And I decided to make it a magic great sword that has uh, plus one, plus two against orcs. And then I came up with like a little story about how this all was uh, the guy who owns this was like in a three hundred style last stand, and he was using that against an army of orcs. So uh, what I what I was thinking of is the orcs down here in the dungeon are trying to get up to extract their revenge. However, he has. Uh, his staff was very dedicated to him, so he cast some, you know, he got some magic going, and he uh, turned them into some undying warriors. So we could say that they, like, locked themselves in, and they're protecting, uh, they're keeping the orcs from getting, uh, getting into the castle itself, despite uh, him being long dead. And what kind of undead do we want? We'll probably, why don't we just give them skeletons? So undead skeleton guard room. And we're going to give them a plus one reaction roll. And uh, the reason for this is because they were made specifically to guard, so they're going to be more okay with humans, uh, well, hum you know, non-monsters, I should say, and they, uh, this will be an interesting uh, thing for the party. So, number appearing is 3d6 or wild 3d10. I wonder what a free-roaming skeleton would look like. An uh, organic, grass-fed skeleton. <laughs> All right, so we're going to uh, we're going to cut that in half because uh, I don't think he would have 3d10 guards. All right, so we ended up with 35 of these. So we're going to distribute these uh, because we want this to you know we don't want to have every everyone can't be in here guarding. Some are uh, going to be some are going to be out on the prowl or on the on the prowl. Some are going to be out on the prowl for uh, for the orcs. So what we'll have here is we'll have a 3d6 of them be here in 8 trying to uh, to get through. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's not a wall. We'll have 3d6 of them uh, out here in the advanced room keeping an eye out. Jesus Christ. Oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> okay, so <laughs> let's roll that 3d6 here. Uh, 15. So 35 minus 15 is uh, 20. We'll say in we'll say in fifteen down here, uh they have you know, they have encamped a little bit. Now these are some smart skeletons. Do two D six is the advanced party. This is these are some pretty pretty advanced and smart skeletons. Let me make this a little bit bigger here. It's easier for you guys to see. And uh we're gonna give this to twelve and have one warrior of or actually one guard captain of two HD, not twenty two HD. Okay, so Got uh got this settled here. So nine, uh, nine is down here. Uh, so nine we're gonna have be empty. It's just going to uh, be the room that has the secret uh, door with the treasure here. And actually, fifteen should probably be empty. That can be like one of their first rest spots. No, no, they're they're fine here. They'll they'll be able to uh, to come out at that point. I really should do like a. I'll be doing some errata videos of the things I changed due to these as I played and uh, include some flavor text here. Now the goal is to the end of this to release an entire PDF of this uh, mega dungeon uh, with, you know, backstory and stuff like that. Uh, Eleven, I said there's going to be uh, giant wasps or giant bees or something like that. Yeah, bees. Okay. This is going to be a lair and it's going to be 5d6. Eighteen giant bees. Right, and I remember I mentioned... Uh, down here in 12, 13, there's going to be some beetles. Put that in 13, and uh, that way in 12, we can put some, like, foreshadowing what's going on. Do uh, giant fire beetles. And these have uh, 2d6 layers for a total of 8. In 12 here, we could have, like, uh, we could have them be fighting. So let's take a... A wild is only uh, a 1d8. 
is the giant beetles, fire beetles, uh, wild. A little D8 here and see how many of those. Okay, four. They would be, uh, they'd be fighting with the bees. Hmm. But why would they be fighting? Maybe for food? Wait, no, bees eat like, bees eat flowers, right? <laughs> I heard that. Do they eat their own honey? Oh, maybe I'm, maybe I'm dumb. Uh, well, they'll fight over something. We'll, uh, we'll think of something here. And so, bees, there's going to be, uh, 1d8 of them as well. It's also going to be four. Okay, well that uh, let's, let's change that to six since the bees are a little bit a little bit squishier and they're going to know it. Also gives the players uh, something to do or you know something interesting to happen. The bees have a treasure type of special too. These have a treasure of none. Oh, something uh, something we can do to foreshadow these uh, these skeleton guards here. At least my group went upstairs first, so they found the chainmail and the spear in the uh, in the guard captain's room. So they're going to notice that this chainmail looks really familiar, and the, all of them are going to have spears. Let me uh, let me put that in real quick. Fourteen is the carousel here. I don't know how to spell that word, so uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we can do like another riddle. Uh, the inscription on the wall. Uh, I want to steal this from Todd from Hexed Press. <laughs> He has a video and he mentions something about uh, touching it with clean hands. And that's like one of the puzzles. So the inscription is going to read, Finlius steers us to the true path. So what I was thinking of here, players could uh, like throw water <laughs> on the doors and uh, that, will, um, that will tell them which one. They could throw water on it or they could just like wet their hands and touch it. So this, is, uh, this one is a little, little esoteric here. Or, I think it's esoteric. Anyways, so I'm going to give the players uh, two two K gold for solving this. Especially since uh, until now this has been pretty um, been pretty treasure light. Uh, they found. I mean, they got you got the the goblin lair, which is pretty easy to find. But uh, this is optional, so you know maybe they won't find it. Other two, um, the three doors. Left is treasure. Middle is monster. Right is. Ooh, right could be like an alarm. Yeah, that could be. That's definitely something. What kind, what kind of monster would be here? Let's see, something, something stupid. Ooh, we can, uh, we can have a white. That would be, that would be brutal. Uh, and since we have the magic weapon uh, at the top there, then you know that gives them, uh, gives them a chance at least. If they get that too, then it's going to be. Uh, oh man, they'll, they'll probably have to leave for a while. So we're, we're almost here. Uh, leave seventeen empty. Uh, 18 is order hole. This is a good time to uh, to roll for the orc glare. I need to I need to put in some traps and something too. I'll I'll go back and do that after uh, after I finish keying most things. All right, 10 d6 and an orc glare. Jeez. Okay, so we got 32 in the. Uh, so now we got to go go uh, from these 32. We got to do some uh, some warriors and stuff. Okay, so one of 12 is going to be a chieftain, and there is going to be two chieftains. Oh wait, and there's a 30 more that will be an orc king. Okay, 31 orcs, orc king, six HD, AC of 16, and they're going to have a plus two to damage. What do orcs do? 1d8. All right. So now out of these 32, uh, we're going to have some warriors here. So one of out of every eight. So it's going to be three warriors, and they're going to have uh, two HD and 31 minus 3. Okay, so we got a pretty good assortment of works here. So let's work mor mortar hole. I feel like I've I feel like I've said I've done that before. Oh, I said turtle instead of turtle. Let's murder hole here. We are going to have a uh, 1d4. So we'll have 2d6 uh, works here. Seven. Perfect average. Torch warrior leading them. Now we'll have 22 in here. And we're going to take some of these and uh, put them in a wandering monster table. So 20 is going to be, uh, we're going to have some trapped treasure in here. And one, 24 is going to be another empty room. The 22, I want something like plant-based. Because I'm thinking like a big underground, ooh, like big underground, like mushroom dude. Ooh, this is going to be like a arboreum. Arboreum? What, what's the, like a... Greenhouse. Let's uh, let's not look like a total idiot. And it's a uh, 1d8 yellow mold generally. This is perfect because uh, yellow molds are rendered yellow, or not rendered yellow, <laughs> but rendered them dormant. So that's going to be kind of cool. 
they'll have to, to slowly to navigate around. Oh, oh, 23. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll have a custom monster called the Ghoulish Gardener. And it's going to be just a zombie. And it's going to have three hit die and do 1d8 plus one damage. Uh, I'll think of some reasons for this later. <laughs> just because I, I like alliteration, uh, if you haven't noticed. And just the thought of a, like a, a zombie. Like dressed up like a gardener, just rawr, cutting like plants and shit is, is hilarious. <laughs> okay, so that's it for the actual content. Uh, let me go off camera and uh, clean this up, and I'll present the final uh, the final thing here. And all right, here we go. So we've uh, we've cleaned it up a little bit. You have the section here that we worked on today. Uh, I've added some flavor text, as you could see. Uh, everything in, I need to fix that real quick, but everything you see in italics is uh, stuff that you should be reading to your player uh, once you know this is all done and released. Um, some stuff doesn't have anything in it to uh, provide them a break and a place to rest, and uh, I made sure that those had flavor text, that way they could, uh, you know, get a, get immersed in, in our setting here. We scroll down, uh, you see quite, quite a lot, and we have our maps here, which I need to, to key in their own section. I got some weird overlapping, but that's fine. It didn't really cut anything off. And yeah, that is our final product as of now. So I will be uh, running this campaign tonight. This is kind of in real time. I don't know if I've mentioned that, but pretty much as I make these videos and release them, uh, I run it that night. So yeah, uh, I hope you, I sincerely hope you enjoyed. Um, if you would like to see me do anything uh, specific in the comments, let me know. Uh, if you would like me to skip the drawing and just do the king, uh, or, you know, something to change it up, uh, let me know as well. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day. See ya.